the, the things proceed, you know, Hiver is, and, and also you're getting kind of interested looks. I mean, some of the, the Thrall in particular, you know, will invite you down just to say hello because they are rapidly revising their assessment of Hiver as, you know, the, you know, who let them in here sort of right. member of the, <laughs> so, um, so that they're, they're revising this assessment, you know, before, before these uh, arrangements you've described um, separate out. Um, the, the one that seemed like the wishy or the, the, the nice one of the good cop, bad cop thing they were doing, the, right. the, the nice one, if you will, has actually been the it has now gone dormant and the other mm -hmm. one is the spokesperson and the leader and everything like that so um so you're talking to that one um okay and certainly in a little bit you'll be going over to the annex as as agreed um, okay dukin your yes. role now is, uh, as you see fit, you are a delegation unto yourself. And um, I believe it was that, that Hiver had suggested that you, oh, that you continue to work with the scroll, with the, th with the thrall, I think, was my, is my memory of what Jerry yeah. said. So, um, yeah. so yes, one of the thrall will, will, will basically accompany you to the explosion site and meet the other members of the delegations that have come to investigate. So um, if there's anything you want to do or say, let me know. No, I think, I mean, I think the only question I had is uh, you'd mentioned that the, the boar had kind of. Right. But that was the only person who's seen that though. Is, yes. Some of them. The only person who's okay. seen that is Kixkull. So now let's go and see what's happening gotcha. over there. Oh yeah. So yeah, right. I'm, I'm I'm, I'm pleased as punching, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very intrigued by the trolls, so I'm uh, yeah. uh, happy with this arrangement. Excellent. Um, what you'll pick up from dealing with them is that the one who's currently like acting as sort of the spokesperson and leader actually channels the collective of the entire thrall population galactically. And mm -hmm. since everybody's been cut off from communication, they're only dealing with the data bank that they brought with them. So they've kind of got a snapshot of the population when they left, but that's whom they think of. They, their, their whole brain is just an expression of that collective averaged out will of the people. Yeah. But the <laughs> yeah. other one, but the other one is by definition, the opposition. Yeah, that's cool. And so we'll always speak in opposition and the, the, the role you'll discover their ritual words are why and why not. That's what they will always present to the collective will. And yeah. things won't happen unless they, out, they say the same thing. So that's their, their, their deal. Yeah, um, very cool. Yeah, so weird as shit with their little weird eyes and stuff. But, you know... Um, <laughs> And so, uh, and, and if the two are in frank opposition, then all the rest of the thrall just shut down in the group. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like it. So, uh, Helma, what's going on over there? Mm. Yes. After having consider the distance back to the other avix and what's going on and given the fact that i'm a little bit curious i'm going to try and follow them aha uh -huh. okay so um the, the it's olmac who will be on the kind of forensic team working with hyver the, right, so that's that is the the Avix that you're dealing with, and at the moment you Kixcole are considered to be mingling socially with the fairly extensive presence, you know, a lot of individuals of War and he saw, so nobody's really you know paying much attention to you at this point 
because right now they're busy trying to come up with their delegation and they have to elect a new emissary and in the Esau. And one thing you're quickly realizing is that whenever these two groups of people try to get anything done, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. Pretty soon, somebody's grandfather's bad behavior will be brought up as relevant to the discussion. And it's this this is goes this is how they get things done in this particular group of people. So there's there's a great deal of hubbub about who's going to be the new emissary and who's going to be working with you know those those freaking Scrang. I don't want to work with a Scrang. You have to work with a Scrang. The Hiver said so. Screw the Hiver. No, you screw the hacker. Good luck. <laughs> you know, that that kind of dialogue is just going on in, in profusion. Um, so in the midst of this, following them really shouldn't be that hard. Except for the fact that you're puffy and full of bright colored feathers. How are you going to manage that? Like trying to wrestle with an uh, unmoderated forum. It's like, yeah, I know, <laughs> but the, what? The, yeah, but her issue is she's trying to sneak off, like follow these sneaky. Mm -hmm. So the question is, well, what will you do with that? Well, uh, basically, in the usual party goer's way, like dropping a word here, giving a smile there, and constantly moving to the outskirts of the groups, and at least trying to get far enough out to see what that door is right and if it's possible to follow those separatists yes further without risk well here's what's happening is that they are timing things so that whenever a big discussion breaks out that's when they move um, and they uh, and, and they move in this really casual, hoony kind of way. They're very good at this, actually. Um, Probably when, better uh, than. Me, but yeah, the, but it, it, it's kind of you're kind of like yeah. These guys do have kind of that you know stereotypical blend with the crowd, do normal things, except that you just laid a bomb down kind of look, right? So um, the what, but this door that I'm talking about is a big surprise. Because it looks like it's just a big piece of furniture in this room um, that was original to the, the hangar base. Um, but if you go around behind it, they keep disappearing. So someone will walk behind it and then they don't walk around the other side. So that's what I mean by a door. It looks as though this, this sort of stand-up pillar slash chair thing or whatever it was hitching post for a spaceship for all we know might have some sort of opening in the other side that is away from everybody's sight so your job you're you're getting close enough through the activity you've talked about so the question is whether you're going to follow them in there Well, after a last look around, <laughs> if I don't see anybody kind of seeing me, mm -hmm. yes. Well, I like your phrase, one last look around. <laughs> a, a phrase full of potential. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm curious, yes, mm -hmm. but... I'm not, I mean, I know <laughs> how damp this is on the other side. So, so I'm still trying to, to catch so, some eye on me so I could signal. I mean, what do I have those feathers for? That's a good point. Okay. So but if you want. Some, I'm not see because I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm kind of split mm -hmm. in conflict with myself. I don't want to follow them, but I don't want to lose them either. So, so I'm really always... trying to find somebody that looks at me. <laughs> well, you can certainly communicate with someone if you want to. That's what I'm asking, is what do you do? Yeah, but... 
somebody that would believe me if I tell them people are vanishing behind that. Uh, well, cloud. the only people around you right now are both are both Voir and Isol of different <sighs> ranks, yes. roles. So. The war I was talking to initially, if he's still close enough, I'm trying, I'm basically trying to signal something weird is going on here without yelling through the room. I see. So okay. my feathers go up. And they change to bright red. Ha. Ah, okay. So um, you will you will signal this, and mm -hmm. the um, can hope he understands. <laughs> um, that's not a problem, I think, except where a role will be involved. By the way, the name of this particular voir is Min. Think of yourself as very French when you say that Min. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, really bad idea. Mm -hmm. The name, by the way, as long as we're doing names for Renee, um, the mm -hmm. title of the um, of the first of the currently active leader throw is the one that represents the collective will is Senes S E N E S, and I bet you can guess what the name of um, of the other one is, which is Nesen, N-E-S-E-N. -E in other words, they're flipped. Okay. Um, and uh, the one who is assigned with you to work on the, the explosion site, his name is Elin. And that one seems much more like just a regular individual and not weird except for going dormant sometimes. Gotcha. Um, the uh, let's see, anyone else? Uh, oh yes, and Helma, the 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 Esau who was exploded was named Grumpa, which doesn't seem very relevant because they were exploded. Except that for some reason they're already putting pictures of Gruma up all over. It just seems to be something it's that the Esau like to do. Um, They're making mm -hmm. um, like a memorial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of in sort of a poster, like slap it up on every surface kind of way. Um, and so let's see here. Um, so you have you have you. It is a role for you, Helma, to get this across in a way that doesn't cause a, another. Um, well, a certain problem. There, there are consequences should to a failure of you trying to do this discreetly and communicating across a different species with your feathers. Um, who knows what you're saying, you know, in war by accident. Um, and so, um, but, uh, but you're a quick study, so you've got actually a better chance than most. So instead of one die, two dice. You okay. Can, you've been what deliberately kind of soaking up as much of them as you can, and you're very good at that. So, two dice for your base. Mm -hmm. um, and just if you haven't picked a trait, let me know. Yes, I did. Oh, excellent. Some feathers. Okay. So, yeah, with the plus one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so now I only have to decide how many of my pool die mm -hmm. I want to pull in. Oh, there. I forgot. Oh. What? Everybody take what? an extra pool die. I was going to start the session with everybody getting a plus one. Okay. Okay. Right. right. Nice. Yeah. Well, all there's right. the rules are the rules in the pool wavered all over the place through different versions about this. And the one that you're holding has a ridiculous rule. I don't like it at all. But I'm I'm going to try it this way. Right. Um okay. of, of, of plus one every session no matter what. So that should be good. Mm. Okay. So there you go, Helma. That's where you're working from. Uh, I'm 
going to risk three of my blue die. Mm, excellent. Okay. So six. Yeah, that's good. Go for it. Ooh, three ones. Not that it makes a difference. One would be enough, I think. Ah, uh, but it feels good. <laughs> but it feels good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> excellent. Right. Would you like to tell us how this works out, or would you like to... Um, and remember, you've got considerable scope for effect if you take the monologue of victory. Whereas mm -hmm. if you... You can't, like, make up the backstory, but you can get a lot done, like just like Jerry did when he did it. Or you can hand it to me and get another die. It's up to you. Um, let's try just for a change. So, I get his attention, and he's probably going to come up to me to inquire what this is about, because I don't think he would be able to interpret the changes. And um, I would ask him if he if he realizes that part of his group is missing and point out point out the place where they vanished and I gather that he is going to send a couple of people after them he, he'll have his own security mm -hmm. so he'll send them away and I'd say as I want to stay here, mm -hmm. he's going to send some of his people over to the Addicts. And I'll send a note with them mm -hmm. to go to Oma. Excellent. So he knows what's going on. Okay. Well, that's the, so that's fantastic that this set of this team is sent over. Now, I'll role play um, Mim a little bit in this regard because uh, he will be very agitated by what you said and let out a stream of curses that contains exactly zero vowels. <laughs> no, wait, I take it back. This zero consonants. That's right. I have it backwards. These guys are all vowels. Okay. So, and, and smooth consonants like V's and M's and stuff like that. So it's just this weird consonantless stream of cursing and will be very stern, very intense about, you know, get after them. Um, they will return with uh, a prisoner, one of the war. Um, and there is a big, by the time, OMAC is busy, but one of the security team will, will come over um, from the AVIX. And by the time that fellow shows up, there is a, the, the war are, have, have fallen apart into bickering. Apparently there is an irredentist group within the Voir that specifically wanted to go and winkle out the technology beneath the city that they knew about. This is now revealed that, remember you had pointed out, hey, wait a minute, there's stuff under here. And they realized that somebody was figuring out their game ahead of them. And so they went into their mode of, okay, now let's get down there. Um, so all of a sudden, there is this, this immense discussion. In fact, it should be evident to everybody else that all of a sudden, there's this boom of discussion and uh, uh, debate and, and unrest among, the, the, among them. Um, the secret cannot be kept. There are ancient, ancient chambers, tunnels, complexes. The prisoner is not in any shape to do anything but speak, um, knowing full well the fate that might await them if they don't. So the prisoner will spill and say, look, you must, I mean, we have to secure it. The ancient peoples, the peoples who were here before, they, their, their, their whole technology is still down there. We must seize it. If we have that, we can't let the Scrang have it. We can't let the Luca have it. We can't let the Avix have it. You know what they're like. 
Past history and gives them, yeah. Past history does give them a little bit of credence in that point of view. Uh, 